Good morning, www.andrewmarkmusic.com, the Golden Rule Winter, Winter Solstice Series, Part 10 of 12. <clears throat> I'm going to preface today by talking about the idiocratic Gnostic views that I hold that I believe are relatively rare. <clears throat> um, to be clear, I am not a Luciferian Kabbalistic Gnostic. This is the Gnosticism that came out of the Talmud in the 14th century beginning. I'm using the dates loosely. Um, and through various secular and secret orders, <clears throat> they infiltrated uh, Europe and uh, their symbolism is everywhere. Um, you can watch the documentary Secrets in Plain Sight by Scott Ostat, and it just shows this beyond any reasonable doubt that this is what happened. The net effect of that is Europe was covertly conquered by this group of people coming out of the Middle East. <clears throat> and then the documentary shows that that North America, that's, you know, I mean, that's what North America, that was the agenda, was the New Jerusalem. I, I mean, the, any other interpretation of what North America is, it's just not dealing with reality, you know. Um, North America is exactly what it was intended to be. Now, South America, probably, probably a different sect, probably, you know, different, uh, slightly different agendas. Russia, <laughs> you know, uh, what, ha what happened in Russia a hundred years ago is direct directly related what happened to Europe prior, you know. And uh, one of the more interesting things to me is the name Jerusalem that comes from antiquity. And within it, you have the, U the United States of Russia right within the name, you know. Jerusha USA Lum. And, uh, you know, obviously I've pointed out in this series that Israel is Isis, Ra, and El, the, the old uh, Semitic Saturn worship um, that got put into the cult of Saturnalia. <clears throat> um, So yeah, that's not the kind of Gnostic I am. I hold very distinct views from that. Um, they generally believe and are trying to fulfill this narrative of the, what happened in the Garden of Eden between the serpent and Eve. And Adam. Um, so the serpent promised them they shall be like gods, right? And everything that's happening now is to try and fulfill that through artificial intelligence, of course. Because it's coming from an extraordinarily negative place, it will end up being a disaster. It's going to look like the Hunger Games. Um, <clears throat> But that's what they're trying to do. Now, this is juxtaposed to uh, another trope of the Archons, which is the Messiah, the political Messiah, who's going to rule the earth with his chosen master race. Um, <clears throat> and so you have the whole of modern history are, are these two streams of, of um, uh, thought being acted out in real time. Um, so that's what's going on. My, uh, you know, someone was asking me more about what I believe about cosmology. And I believe that Yeshua, the, this promised Messiah of Yahweh, is a replicant 
of the Gnostic crystals and that Lucifer is a replicant of Sophia. Uh, Sophia and crystals are the aeons that ex pre-existed this uh, matrix. So what we're dealing with is the machinations of the Demiurge and the Archons who view us as pets, you know, if I can put it nicely. It's a it's it's an interesting uh, it's an interesting business model. Um, okay, the golden rule, winter solstice, ten of twelve, and this is interesting because this is another view on it. Um, this preface lines up quite nicely with this because this is going to talk about whether this phenomenon is actually extraterrestrial. Now that's something I don't believe, but I do consider it. Um, tis, the t tis the time in this series to talk about E.T. Well, yes, it does seem like modernity's preferred explanation for everything strange and unknown. Uh, I've personally never seen a UFO, and I've wandered the boonies all night long for near seven years back when I was young. Nada. And I saw many incredible things in the night sky, but everything I saw was natural. I've never seen E.T. either. I have, I have had many spiritual experiences, though, but I've been able to distance myself from them and try and analyze them from a non-biased objective position, as much as this is possible for anybody. But I believe I've done that. For me, it's the ancient megalithic architecture that offers clues to some other intelligence involved on Earth because Iron Age, Stone Age humans didn't build these things all over the Earth. So whatever E.T. is, it was somehow involved in the creation of these structures, which all seem to date back to around 12,000 years ago. And so much for biblical historicity. Of course, there is endless anecdotal evidence, but I view that as not much different from religious anecdote. Um, it doesn't amount to much proof of anything, and moreover, the anecdotes couldn't be more diverse, confusing, and contradictory. I've quipped in the past that if all this is the work of angels, then they, then they are the most confused beings in the universe, and ET theory doesn't fare much better. If it ends up being true, it would mean to me that the universe we are in is extraordinarily convoluted, that God doesn't exist in any conventional sense, and that from humanity's perspective, it's best to view God as an alien extraterrestrial of some sort. This would be the starseed theory. There are a few theories I like more than others. The one where an ET race got uh, stranded on Earth, and they were also responsible for human DNA manipulation. This re race of ETs has one general goal, to get their technology back so they can escape this planet again. The Atlantis Lemurian theory. And concomitant with this theory is the notion of myriad alien races, many of them involved here on Earth. <clears throat> Ancient texts also allude to the Anu. This is another theory I still consider possible. What's interesting to me as a Christian Gnostic is that the newly found text, the Nag Hammadi, describe two groups of archons, the greys of popular culture and the reptilian. The Anu seem to be in cahoots with both these groups, the Anu being the biblical Jehovah, the Gnostic demiurge who controls the earth. Either one of these theories points towards a conspiracy of elites who are keeping any truths on this matter hidden to the general population. One aspect I find intriguing is these theories allude to the possibility that the Earth's academies are all coordinated in two primary, two primary ways. To hide the truth and to a commitment to reacquiring lost technology. Now I have a personal quibble with the Earth's academies and that they are the one group of people I'll lay blame on if civilization collapses because they should have known and done better. This particular theory is a somewhat coherent theory of why the academies are culpable and endlessly corrupted by the corporate machine and its mass machinations while debt slaving another generation of students. <clears throat> um, 
I'll touch on Buddhism and offer what I consider golden rule econ economics as a solution to civilization's woes as uh, I wrap up this series of 12 posts. Uh, so there you have it. That's uh, part 10 of the series. There ain't no train coming, there's no turn.